when we went to start? No. Uh, our laboratory studies uh, carbon nanotubes, particularly their optical properties based on their near-infrared fluorescence. So for this purpose, we need optical excitation at a variety of wavelengths. Carbon nanotubes have different structural forms. The different structural forms have different characteristic absorption wavelengths. And most of our work has been done using diode lasers without tunability, but with fixed wavelengths. And we can excite a variety of different nanotube structures that way, but not always with very high efficiencies. So after we do that, uh, we examine the near-infrared fluorescence of the nanotubes, both in bulk samples and in microscopic studies, where we look at individual nanotubes, study their spectrum, study their bending properties, study their motions and fluids, and uh, study the spectroscopic brightness of different tubes as well. In order to give us more versatility in our experiments, it's a great value for us to have tunable excitation so that we can excite a particular type of nanotube right at the peak of its resonance and also so that we can study um, spectroscopically scans where we scan through the excitation wavelength and monitor uh, the response of the nanotube system. Okay, uh, in order to uh, get more versatility in our experiments, we're going to be using this tunable uh, tie sapphire laser to provide excitation of particular nanotube species on what's called their 2 2 resonances. Uh, so these span uh, different wavelengths in the red from that covers pretty well the tie sapphire range. Some of the nanotubes absorb at shorter wavelengths, and for that we use a di uh, conventional dye laser in addition to the fixed wavelength diode. So anyway, the beam from this laser will be trans uh, transferred into uh, the microscope that we use for single molecule studies, single nanotube studies, and it'll be focused on nanotubes on the sample stage, then we collect the near-infrared fluorescence and analyze it spectrally and spatially. We intend to have this under computer control so that we can do scans of excitation wavelength while we look at the fluorescence response of the nanotube. Uh, finally, we'll be using this, I think, also for enhanced studies of nanotubes in biological settings where the nanotubes of particular uh, sorted NM types will be introduced into biological specimens, and then we hope to detect them with very high sensitivity by tuning right to the, uh, uh, to the peaked excitation wavelength of that particular type of nanotube and exciting just that type of nanotube inside the biological specimen and detecting in a narrow spectral range near its emission wavelength. So we hope that this will give us better results on some of our biological experiments where we can track the nanotubes as they go through different uh, tissues and organs in test из-за этого, то есть даже одиночная молекула, одна реакция может получить огромную как бы, эффективность длину нанотрубки, то есть до 200 нанометров. То есть одна реакция 200 нанометров.
А тут как раз ты вводишь этот э, реагент? Масло, масло. А, это масло? Это ты уже решил, что делать? Масло, масло, масло. Интересно, мы... Еще не нужно... Какой сейчас диапазон длины дистанции? на конце это я вам сейчас нарисую вот 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 Я вам вынул, присылал один. Просто 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 я вам вынул, присыл